I have Robin Newton and Andy Allen. On Starleaf, we have Sinead Innes, Alex Easton, the Vice Chair Kelly Armstrong, Karen Mullen and Fran McCann. So you are all very welcome today. Um, I just then we'll go to agenda item one, which is apologies. Have we any apologies there? I see. Um, sorry, no, I did read out Alex's name. Sorry, I'm getting myself confused here looking at the screen. Um, any apologies? Anybody needs to put in? I don't think so, is there? No? Okay. I'll move on to agenda item two, which is draft minutes. Uh, members shall find the draft minutes for the 22nd of April 2021 at page six. Can I ask our members content to agree the minutes as drafted? Good stuff, thank you. I'll move on then to agenda item three, which is chairperson's business. Members, on a number of occasions over the past few months, we have written to the executive office and the DALO for the executive office has requested the clerk redirect the query. We have therefore sought clarification in relation to correspondence with the executive office and going forward, if the committee requests that a letter be sent to TEO or another department, the committee staff will take the issue away and do the same initial checks first. Um, I just, uh, it's just that uh, we've said that some of these ma matters that we've had arisen are for the executive. We've sent a letter to the executive office and uh, they're actually saying, well, actually, it's not to go to the executive office. Isn't that about the height of it? So we need to actually, that, that if we can lay any decisions then to go to other committees, can we then let the, the clerks just run over um, the issues just to make sure we're sending it through to the right uh, committee? Um, so are members content that committee staff uh, will go ahead and carry out those checks and write to the appropriate deport, department and report back to the committee the week after? Is that okay? Yes? Great. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, members, an issue has arisen in relation to Starleaf and decisions being taken by a committee, not this committee, I have to say. Um, just to make you aware that as we proceed through the formal decisions on the clauses of the licensing bill and on the committee report, it is vital that we know which members are present for decisions. For those members on Starleaf, if your camera is on but you haven't messaged the committee team to say you're not present at that point in time, it will be presumed that you are present for any decision made. Um, and just then I would ask that you alert the committee team as soon as possible if you've dropped out and don't get back on to Starleaf very quickly. Um, this it has arisen um, because maybe a, a member, a phone call comes in and they need to go take it or whatever, which wouldn't generally happen if we were all in the committee room. Um, so it's just to make members aware, if your camera's switched on, you're, you're, you're deemed to have actually been in the room when a decision has been made. Um, so, and I know that some people do drop out from time to time, and it's up to me. I'm the one that actually is the only one that can see the screen here um, to get you back in again. Um, and so sometimes there's a delay on that as well. So if you feel if you have dropped out, just alert um, one of the committee team, Sean or Oliver or Antoinette. Um, they'll certainly uh, let me know that you're not present. Is members okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then just finally, just to let you know that on Tuesday, I will be in the chamber for the consideration stage of the pension schemes bill. As we heard last week from department officials, all the amendments are in schedule three and consist of technical drafting and consequential amendments required as a result of the Westminster um, Pension Schemes Act 2021. So it's just to let you know that. Okay, members? All right, then can we move on then to agenda item four, which is SR 2021-105, the Social Security Coronavirus Miscellaneous Amendment Regulations Northern Ireland 2021. You'll find a copy of the rule at page 19. We considered the SL1 at our meeting on the 15th of April. Can I then ask any mem members, have you any objections to the rule? No. no. Okay, no. then I put the following no. that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2021-105, the Social Security Coronavirus Miscellaneous Amendments Regulations Northern Ireland 2021, and subject to the Examiner of Strategy Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Okay, members, we're then going to move on to agenda item five, which we will go into closed session. It's the licensing and registration of clubs amendment bill. We will be coming out of this and go back into open session just to make you aware. Um, so before um, we do that, can I then ask for all members and Claire McCanny to be brought into the spotlight, please?
There we go, there's Claire in. I'm now going to go into closed session, members. 29. Okay, members, we're back in public session. Can I ask you to turn to agenda item 7, which is matters arising? And can I inform members that you've been provided at page 251 with a copy of the 34th report of the Examiner of Statutory Rules 2020-21. The examiner draws attention to SR 2021-64, the Social Security Claims and Payments, Employment and Support Allowance, Personal Independence Payment and Universal Credit, Telephone and Video Assessment, Amendment Regulations Northern Ireland 2021. The Department has acknowledged that the regulations were laid in breach of the 21-day rule and has explained the reason for the breach. The examiner is content that the Department on this occasion has provided satisfactory explanation of the breach. Are members content to note that? Yes, yes. content to yes. note. Okay, thank you. Um, members have been provided at page 261 with the ministerial response in relation to the public petition for a review of the burial grounds regulations, Northern Ireland 1992. The minister states that having considered this petition against the legislative process, she sees no merit in conducting a review at this time in relation to the sale of graves and the council's fee recorded regarding testing for depths of graves. Both of these issues are matter, matters for councils to consider. Again, can I ask members of the any comment? Alex? Hi. Um, yeah, I'm very disappointed by the result. Um, it, 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 it doesn't seem to be an understanding of what the issues are. Um, the issues are quite simple. That people have bought grades for instance for three people, yet they're being told the day before a funeral that that person can't go into the grave because there's maybe not enough depth. Um, but some of the decisions that are being made are literally centimetres um, in depth, and there's there's no there's no room for a bit of common sense, you know. Um, and these decisions are causing heartache for families the day before a funeral. They're being forced to um, buy a new grave the day before the funeral when they thought they had one and they were going to be in with their loved ones. Um, it's caused a lot of heartache, as as Kelly will know, in the, the Arts and North Mine Council. And I I just do not accept what the Minister is saying here. The, there doesn't seem to be a recognition of the, the human cost this is, um, uh, a lack of common sense, um, and it's also a way of the Council's making money, which I don't agree with, especially with the death of a loved one. And the incidents that was mentioned, you know, that person only got buried because there was such a, a stink caused um, in the media about the whole situation. Um, so I was wondering, I'm not prepared to let this drop. Um, I was wondering if the committee was agreeable, because I, I do know some councils seem to have a slightly different approach to this, and some of them do seem to uh, go with the rules strictly, and some of them seem to have a wee bit of a common sense uh, to try and avoid these situations. So I was wondering, could we write to each council the, what their policies are on this and see if there are different approaches, uh, see what they're saying, and then maybe have a look at it once we get those replies back, if that would be agreeable to the committee. Okay, um, I'm happy enough with that suggestion. I know my own council that I live in. Um, kind of base things on a, an individual basis as they come through and try to show a bit of common sense. Um, I don't know if Ards and North Down are the exception to the rule. Um, it might be worth getting that information through. It's certainly within our remit to ask for it if members are in agreement. Yeah, great. You agree with Alex's proposal? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, Alex. Chair to write to individual yeah. councils. So that's just to write to individual councils to ask them what their policies are. Um, on on those specific issues, okay? Sure. Yeah, go ahead, sure. Kelly. Can I just ask? Could um, we just save ourselves a bit of time? Should we go through Solos or Nilga to ask them to say that the committee would be interested to see um, some sort of equality across Northern Ireland, um, and to ask them are they 
considering, you know, aligning policies on graves across Northern Ireland because it would make it much more easier for all of their, our constituents. Um, the other thing I was going to say was um, in the Assembly, um, we had the debate on end of life. And this is one of the issues, as Alex has said, it has caused a terrible amount of stress for people when they find out just at the time their loved one has either is about to die or is dying, um, that their grave is no longer able to be used and their husbands and wives can't be buried together or parents can't be buried with maybe children they've lost. Um, so I think it is something that we need to push, but I think there might be an easier way of doing it if we maybe approach Nilga or Solus to ask them, are they proactively looking to align policies across Northern Ireland? I think we can ask that also because this is very much a decision for each individual council. It's not a, a solace or an ILGA decision. It's up in, to each individual council on, because I know from, I, I sat in council for a number of years and I remember setting our policies on the pricing of, of graves and for people outside the area and all those various different things. And each council has the autonomy um, to make their own decision on that. But it might be worth, as you say, writing to Solace to ask if they um, are, have considered, which I don't think they have, um, considered a you know more of a joined-up uh, approach to this. We can ask them that, but I think we need to write to each individual council as well, if that's OK. Yeah. yeah. that all right, Kelly? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. OK. Yeah. Remember... Sorry, somebody else want to say something there? No, okay, members, happy enough, I move on then. Um, can I ask you then, turn to page six, 263, where you'll see a ministerial response in relation to capacity building in sports organi or sporting organisations and clubs. Sport NI has designed a programme called Supporting Clubs to Build Back Better. This programme has a number of different strands and will run throughout 21-22. One of the strands focuses on building capacity. Sports governing bodies and clubs will be able to engage in workshops that focus on building their capacity in areas related to business operations such as strategic and financial planning and risk management. There is also a connectivity element that will help clubs and their volunteers to improve their use of the digital technology to connect with their members and volunteers and to support them in connecting with other partner, partner organisations in their communities. The Build Back Better programme also includes a people development element that will offer access to grants to support governing bodies and their clubs to provide quality coaching and help to rebuild and sustain membership. This element has a special focus on coaching children and young people in club settings. Uh, members, can I ask if you any comment on that? Are you content to note that? Content? Content, sir. Okay. Then can I ask you to move on then to page 265, mm -hmm. where you'll see a departmental response in relation to the sub-regional stadia program. Um, at Minister's question time on Tuesday the 13th of April, the Minister again reaffirmed her commitment to the programme, stating, by the end of this month and going into the start of next, I hope to bring forward recommendations on the way forward to executive colleagues. The advisory working group was not established to report to the Minister. Rather, the group meets with departmental officials to advise on the development of proposals. The next meeting um, was to take place is that yesterday and will inform and further develop the proposals on the shape and scope of the programme for the Minister's consideration. Again, any comments members wish to make on that? Or are they content to note? Sinead, I see your hand up. Yeah, it's just an, a comment or a question around the advisory group. Do we, maybe I might have missed this, but do we know the makeup of that group? Um, I mean, it, you'd like to think it's regionally balanced and, and spread, but do we have any further information on, on the makeup of, of that group? Or could we be provided with it? Okay. Um, I'll ask. We can ask for that, certainly, absolutely. Yes. Thank point. you. Uh, Minister asked, answered a question uh, at table um, at question time that didn't get answered, so I'll send that through. Chair, I have the breakdown. Okay. okay good. So Andy has the breakdown through a, a question that he had tabled for question time and it didn't get to him, so he has the written answer, so he's going to send that through um, to members. Um, Kelly, did you want to come in there? Can't hear you. 
Sorry, exactly the same question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have it here, Chair. It's the IFA, NIFL, uh, Chief Leisure Officers Association Council, Sport NI, and the Department. Okay. But I'll send that through. It's, we'll send that through so members have that. Um, Andy will send it through to the, the clerk and we'll get it sent out. All right. Are members content that I move on from that? Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll move on then to uh, ask you to turn to page 267 where we have a departmental response to SL1 Domestic Energy Efficiency Grants Amendment Regulations 2021. Officials from the department continue to work very closely uh, with colleagues in the Department for the Economy on the development of the energy strategy. The department notes that the energy strategy consultation suggests that the Department for the Economy will also look to run domestic rating our domestic energy efficiency schemes. In addition to the Northern Ireland Sustainable Energy Programme, the Department will work with DFE to ensure alignment. In the meantime, in order to provide support for those in fuel poverty, the Department will continue with the current affordable warmth and boiler replacement schemes under the domestic grants regulations, recognising that these schemes will need to be revised in line with the pathway um, to net zero. Again, members, any comments or questions on that? If not, can we uh, content to note? Content? Content. Okay. Then can I ask you to turn to page 269, where you'll see a departmental response in relation to draft local government coronavirus flexibility of council meetings regulations Northern Ireland 2020. The department has received legal advice indicating that the necessary changes can only be made by way of primary legislation. The Minister intends to include provision in a local government amendment bill to extend the provisions on remote council meetings. Um, again, any comments or questions on that? I think that was I brought that up uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, that council meetings didn't have the necessary legislation to continue with their remote council meetings um, under, the, under coronavirus. Um, so we'll wait and see what comes back on that, Kelly. I'm just going to say, um, Chair, sorry, the individual legislation runs out on the 7th of May. Yes. Um, there hasn't been anything put in place from the um, timetable we received from the business office um, on this legislation. I'm just wondering, can we ask the Minister what financial support our councils are going to be given then to have to meet in person until such times as this um, is resolved. Um, I know speaking to a number of councillors, as, as we all do, um, that their chief executives are, are very aware of, of the issue coming up. Um, they're talking about using you know, leisure centres and so on for the meetings, um, rushing through committee meetings. It's not a good way to do local government, but this is causing problems. It's just at the... I'm, I'm very aware that this is a piece of legislation that's going to be primary. It needs to be on the timetable for um, the agenda um, within the chamber. It's, it's not there yet, and the 7th of May will pass. Yeah, I, I mean, it was concerning to me when I was for, it was first raised with me that this extension had not already been made um, a few weeks ago. Um, so I, I, I'm glad we did bring it up because um, I, I do think that this needs to come forward pretty quickly, which is next week really, next Tuesday, in order for councils to continue to meet in the format that they're meeting in. Um, I don't know how they, they could manage otherwise, you know, um, to meet in somewhere that is safe. Um, for And, and it, is, it is a councillor's right to be present at those meetings. Um, you, you know, it's their right to be there. That's what we elected them to do. Um, so I do think that we need to maybe go back to the minister as a matter of urgency. Um, to ask when are we going to see this on Tuesday, this legislation. Okay, members on that. I will move on then to page mm -hmm. two, yeah. 270. If I could ask you to turn to 270 of your pack, where you'll see a response from the Department of Finance in relation to COVID-19 funding for the voluntary and community sector. Um, there are no such criteria which exclude voluntary or community-based businesses from any of the grant schemes that the Department of Finance operates, so some may have applied and been successful. However, there is no way of differentiating the recipients of any of its grants to identify which are voluntary and community groups. Um, uh, was it Kelly, was it you brought this up, this issue, or someone brought this issue up? I was just asked if you had any comments on that. I mean, if that's the answer we've got, that's fair enough, um, that they can't differentiate. But 
So it's just asking, I suppose, then, if nobody wants to make a comment, are they content to note it? Yeah, content mm -hmm. to note? That'll do. All right. Yeah. I, um, I think we'll just... Uh, we can, we'll go on and do what we're doing here, and then I know Liam and Carol have joined us, so we'll not keep you too much longer, Liam and Carol. Um, so we'll, if members, if we can go on to agenda item eight, which is correspondence. Um, members, there's a memo, uh, the memo's at page 272. I want to draw your attention um, to correspondence from the Clerking and Member Support Office at page 273 asking for committees uh, experiences in dealing with marginalized groups now this is the committee experience um, so i just want to highlight for us we will be replying about our briefing with the deaf community um, our under 18s on the bill and the assembly engagement team an informal stakeholder event on welfare mitigations where we heard from um, uc us um, so they are that's certainly what we would be putting forward on that um, I think it's unfortunate, given coronavirus and given the that the, the, we've been stuck doing the bill as well, we haven't got the chance, maybe, to speak to um, many more of those groups that that certainly have an awful lot to do with this um, committee and this and the Department for Communities, especially when we look at social strategies. Um, but um, I, I that that's what we're proposing to put forward. Um, members, if there's anything further you think we need to add to that, um, certainly uh, let us know. And it can't be added to, but um, that's where we are at the moment. Are members happy enough with that? Yeah. Okay. Can I then? Yeah. Can I then ask members? Have they any issues they want to bring up under correspondence? No. If not, then are you content then with the memo as drafted? Content. Content. All right. Okay. I'm going to move on to agenda item nine, which is our forward work program. Um, members, at the meeting of the 6th of May next week, we are planning to carry out uh, formal clause by clause consideration on the licensing bill. Um, then, agenda item 10, can I ask members if they have any other business? No other business? Okay. I'm going um, to. Chair, I, um, I was just going to say, I know we've received a briefing um, on the budget, but um, will we be getting a departmental breakdown of the budget? I know other committees are getting that. Yeah, we absolutely are. I don't know what date it's penciled in for in May, but we, yeah, it has it, been it has moved forward because the uh, it was to be today we were getting the briefing, but because the budget timetable chair has m slipped, uh, we moved that forward a, a couple of weeks. Um, I think it's I've forgotten the date off the top of my head, but it's before the end of May anyway. Okay, members okay. happy enough with that. Okay, chair. Sinead. Sinead, go ahead. Yeah. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, it's just to, to bring you, uh, to your attention an issue that was raised with me in the constituency, and it's um, in regards to libraries, uh, really. Um, so a group have got um, funding, uh, Ballymartin GSE, uh, to produce a video um, and book history of the club. The problem is that um, libraries still aren't open, um, but I think even when they do, because I've been in touch with uh, Don Patrick, uh, library, but even when they do open the heritage uh, section, um, which they need to access because some of the stuff is on microfilm, uh, we're being told that, that still won't be um, won't be open to the public even when libraries do open because there's an issue with um, with not being able to sanitise the microfilm. And um, so I think this is I I would suggest that there's other groups that could be impacted by this and um, who have got funding and need to spend it within a certain amount of time for projects like this. So. If we could maybe write to libraries and just um, ask them, do they have a way of sanitising the microfilm or are they working on it? Um, so that groups that have got funding to produce these sort of project or these history uh, projects um, can actually fulfil their, their requirement under the, you know, the, the, uh, the project and the funding that they've received. So um, I'm just wondering, would the, the committee be agreeable to write to libraries on that? Yeah, absolutely. I'm agreeable with that. Um, other members agreeable with Sinead's proposal? Yes? Yep. Yep. Okay, we'll do that. Any other business members want to bring up? No? Okay, then I'll move to agenda. Sorry, excuse me, Chair, the Sorry. budget excuse briefing me. is going to be on the 20th of May. Okay, Janice has just reminded me now the budget briefing will be on the 20th of May. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to then to agenda item 11, which is date, time, location of next meeting. Our next meeting will take place um, next Thursday, the 6th of May, here in room 29 at 9.15am. Okay, members, I'm going to then take you back 
to agenda item six and can I then ask for um, Liam Quinn and Carol Reid to be brought into the audience also. Thank you very much. Okay, you're both very welcome. Good to see you and sorry to keep you waiting. Problem, chair. Okay, chair. okay, so members, we're going to continue today then with our deliberations on the bill, and we'll also ha um, have it in a closed session later again. We'll go back again. Yeah, we're back and forward here. So there are two tabled uh, papers for this agenda item. The first is the department's response to queries raised at last week's meeting, and the second is the is, it, is the text of amendments to be taken forward by the department. Okay, um, so first of all, we're going to discuss the department's response to queries raised at last week's meeting. So if I could ask members then, we're going to move to clause 29, which is young people prohibited from bars. Um, so that was to extend the months a young person can remain in a sporting club until 11 p.m. to include the 1st of May to the 30th of September, to extend the number of awarded nights of young persons can attend in a sporting club until 11 p.m. Council has been asked to draft a further amendment to clause 29 to provide a regulatory making power to amend both references in the future if required. The amendment we have received so far, far are as follows. Page 30, line 8, leave out 1st of June and ends on 30th of August and insert 1st of May and ends on 30th of September. Page 30, line 25, leave out, leave out one such ceremony and insert up to three such ceremonies. Can I ask then, members, are you content with the proposed amendment? Content, members? I think that was what we had asked for, so we should be. Content. Yes, content. Okay. <clears throat> Um, then we move on to cinemas. The department confirms that preparatory work has commenced to carry out a consultation over the summer months. Um, are members content with that? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then can we move then to review clause? The minister has accepted the committee's request for subsequent reviews to take place no later than five years after the last report and that a sunset subsection be included. This will be taken forward as a departmental amendment. Can I then ask our members content that this now deals with the issue of the review clause and therefore no committee amendment will be required? Agreed? Agreed. Okay. Yeah. Okay, members, we're then going to turn to the text of the departmental amendments so far. They're outlined in your table papers. So the first of those is police authorizations for additional hours. This will increase the number of times provided for in the bill that small pubs can apply to the police for late opening from 85 to 104. Increasing the number of times provided for a registration of clubs, Northern Ireland Order 1996, that registered clubs can apply to the police for late opening for special occasions from 85 to 104. So that would be clause 8, page 5, line 26, leave out 85 and insert 104. New clause after clause 24, insert uh, in number of authorisations for special occasions 24A, the article 26 of the registration of clubs order, authorisation for special occasions in paragraph 2 for 85 and substitute this with 104. Again, members, this is what we had asked for and the department have thankfully and have, have happily said they will do it. So can I say, uh, ask members, are they content with the pro proposed amendments? Agreed. Agreed. Okay, and I'm not just the department, but the minister, sorry, as well. I'd agreed to those. Um, so that's that agreed. Then can we move to underage functions? So that was to allow a young person to remain on the premises while in the process of leaving or waiting to be collected. The draft amendments are clause 11, page 16, line 38. After force, insert, or during the first 30 minutes after the authorisation has ceased to be in force. And clause 27, page 29, line 84, after force, insert, or during the first 30 minutes after the authorisation has ceased to be in force. Again, members, are they content with the proposed amendments? 
Content? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. We may I move on to private functions. To allow a young person to attend a private function with a parent or another young person who is also a oh. hold on, I read that again. To allow a young person to attend a private function with a parent of another young person who is also attending the function. The draft amendments are clause eleven, page seventeen, line twenty eight, leave out of a parent and insert either of a parent of that person or of a parent of another person who is under eighteen and attending the function. And then clause 28, page 29, line 29, leave out of a parent and insert either of a parent of that person or of a parent of another person who is under 18 and attending the function. Kelly, you have your hand up there. Kelly? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I, sorry, um, you hear me okay? Um, can I just check on this one? Because this is a, not in keeping with section 75. Not everybody has a parent. Um, and I'm just wondering if that should be either of a parent of that person, a parent or guardian of that person, or parent or guardian of another person. It's just, I'm, I'm very aware that we're assuming that um, only parents take young people to events, not aunts or uncles or, um, you know, anybody, you know, youth workers or anything like that? Or is it parental responsibility or is it, I don't know, yeah, Liam or Carol, any comment on that? Sure, I think we'll uh, maybe have to take advice from council on that one. Um, Carol, have you anything to add? Yes, certainly, Chair. So that relates just to the specific amendments um, under clause 12 and then the new paragraph or the new article 4AB. So the definition in terms of what a parent is, is still there in the bill. They haven't taken that definition out and that where it, that's where it includes that, uh, that parental responsibility. So that is still there. This is just in saying that it could be somebody other than their own parent and their own, the person that has responsibility for them. So the, the definition is, is still included. Go over that defi definition again. Sorry, right, so you know, you're okay. Um, so in, in Article 2 of the Licence and Order Interpretation in Paragraph 2 at the appropriate place, insert parent. So in relation to a person under the age of 18, includes any individual who has parental responsibility for that person within the meaning of the Children Northern Ireland Order 1995 or has care of that person. So that definition applies okay. to both those scenarios where it is your, the young person's actual parent or it is their friends, you know, whoever they're accompanying, it's their parent also. Yeah, yeah. It's just because I don't want care leavers to feel like they're being excluded, or youth workers not able to take people to functions. No, if that's contained within it, um, hopefully that'll be clear enough. Um, it's just the, the use of the word parent, as as we know, is is a bit. It can cause emotional damage to some people that don't have parents. Um, if we have that definition there, yeah. Yeah, that definition remains. That 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 hasn't been amended. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Are happy enough with that, Kelly, then, that that's clear enough? I think maybe I'm just still concerned that the use of the word parent is there instead of including parent or guardian, but um, if it's referred to elsewhere, a, a definition that, that explains that it doesn't mean you have to be a somebody who's given birth or has a partner who's given birth, um, then that's fine. Okay. All right, then, members, can I then ask, are you content with the proposed amendments? On private functions. Agreed? Agreed. Okay. Yeah, agreed. Thank you. Okay, is that all we had to do on that? Yes? Or like, yep. Okay, that's good. Yeah, we're, we're, we're still, Chair, we're still obviously waiting for a number of ministerial amendments before we can yeah. do the clause by clause. Yeah, yeah, we're still waiting on some, but thank you for getting those that information through to us. Um, do we want to ask some questions then of the department following on from some of the chats we've been having around tap rooms and uh, you know I know there were some questions there uh, while the department are, are here um, and we are on open mic as well or we're on live open mic you think we're in a comedy club so might say the word um, <laughs> I'm just just to remind members of that um, so it's just there was there some issues and some questions that we had had around uh, the one hundred the issue of maybe a one hundred and four days and how that would work. Um, so members, of, while Liam and Carl are here, anybody want to ask them any questions around that? 
or of course we I mean we are going into closed session again if members would prefer we can keep Liam and Carol on for a little bit longer in closed session if you prefer that yeah mm -hmm. okay all right then yeah. Liam and Carol would you stay on we've still got have we still got Claire on we have um, so I'm going to then just propose then, oh sorry, there was something I needed to mention um, that I, I've been passed here. Uh, forward work programme, forgot to add that there is a briefing from the Charities. Charities Commission next week. So there is as well, just to let you know that, that that is part of our, our of, of next week's. Um, sorry, sorry, it's a departmental briefing. On oh sorry, a commission. departmental briefing. There you go, we had everybody. <laughs> On the jumping up down there. Um, it's a departmental <laughs> briefing on the Charities Commission yeah. is due to take place next week. Um, so it's just to remind or just to let members know that also. So members, we're going to go into closed session. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29.